Hello. <clears throat> I wanted to make a little video about world position offset after I figured out some stuff today so that I don't forget and I thought some other people might be interested. So I'm in UE 4.27.2 here but it should work in 5 or older versions. Um, so I made a new material. I'm just going to let it be unlit for right now. Um, and we got a square, right? What if we want to be able to rotate uh, in the material this square, right? Well, if you search for rotate about axis, you will find a function to help do this, right? So if you see, this is a world position offset. What does that mean? It means the offset from the world position of the vertices, right? So if you had a vertex at 111 and you wanted to offset it by 111, the world position offset would be 111. And then you would end up with 222, right? Because it would combine the original position with this offset. So you have to kind of keep that in mind that this is an offset, not the new position of the vertices, right? So this produces an offset. So let's say we want to rotate this thing about X. So we can do that. Um, so here's the X axis, right? Um, the rotation angle, uh, let's just put in something like a quarter, no, not a quarter, an eighth. Um, we want to pivot it from its pivot, right? So the object's pivot location. Now, if you see the blue like this, that means you can go into the node. If you double click, you can see what they're doing. They're taking the local space 000 and transforming that to world space, which gives you the pivot. So that's interesting to think about, right? Um, and then uh, the position. So this is the world position of the object. So let's just put in world position and I'm going to choose excluding shader offsets. So there we go. So if we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and let me do like um, add a zero here. And I'm going to use this node to drive this. <coughs> Sorry. So you can see here we've rotated it, right? on the x-axis and we're visualizing this uh, world position offset. So we have rotated a quarter. Why don't we set up something to make it rotate over time, right? So let's, let's take time here. Let's multiply it by something to slow it down so it's not going too fast. Um, maybe 0.5. Um, and then we'll take that into a sign which will produce minus one to one, right? Um, so let's add one to it and divide by two. So that will give us a nice zero to one over time. So let's pop that into rotation angle. Now we can see it rotating back and forth, right? You can see it's a whole 360 degree rotation in 0 to 1. So this rotation angle takes a 0 to 1, which is a little weird. It's not radians, it's 0 to 1. Um, okay, well, let's say we want to rotate on the y-axis. Well, let's just change this to y instead, right? Like this. There you go. Uh, make sure your, your axis here is normalized. So if you're going to just arbitrarily type stuff in here, you might want to throw on a normalize like this. Right? Now we could go 111 and it won't create weird issues. Right? Okay. So now that we are rotating with a world position offset, uh, we might want to do other things, right? What if we want to translate, i.e. move? Well, let's rotate first and then we'll translate, right? So to translate, let's just add some arbitrary uh, position. Let's say uh, 250 in the Z, right? And to combine that, we will just add them together. Like that. There you go. So now you can see we're up in the air rotating now. Okay. So let's call that. And just move that out of the way for a minute now. Okay, what if we wanted to 
do more than one rotation and combine them together. Now this gets a little trickier than one would think. So let's create a new rotation. I'm just duplicating everything, right? And let's just switch this axis so that we can easily see it. Right? So this guy is now... Oh, I don't have a rotation angle hooked up. There we go. Rotating the other way, right? What if we want to combine those two? You might think naively we could just add them together, right? And you would be wrong, <laughs> as you can see. So how do you combine them? Okay, well, this position is a world space position, not an offset, right? So if we want to do this once and then add it to another one, what we can do is create this first world position offset right here. Uh, so let's put this out here. And then we can add it to the world position that we used to start with, right? And now this is the rotated world position offset added to this world position. So it's the actual new world positions of the thing, right? And instead we use this as our position, okay? So this thing is now rotating the rotated world position. So it's rotating this world, world space position of these vertices, and it's going to output its own uh, offset, right? So we need to add that to this one's offset, because this offset causes the thing to rotate, right? And this combination causes this to rotate what has been rotated. So we need to add those together and that will produce the two rotations, see, without weird scaling or other issues like that. So finally, let's say instead of doing this, what if we want to scale? So how to, first, how do we scale? So let's think about that. You're going to need the world position, right? And if you create vectors from, so let's subtract from it, the pivot, right? So if you imagine what's happening here, you have the world position of the vertice, then, or, or the vertex, right? Then you're subtracting its pivot point. So you're creating a vector from the pivot point to that vertex, right? So that vector, now if we multiply that vector, by some value, then it will scale it, right? But when you think about what you want to scale it, let's say we want a scale of 1, right? Well, a scale of 1, see this distance here is a world position offset that would create a scale of 1, right? So let's, let's hook this up to see it. Whoa, that's, that's looking kind of crazy, isn't it? I'm curious about that because that is not what I expected to see. Yeah. So we're taking the world position, subtracting the pivot point, multiplying by something. Well, let's let's try. So a scale of zero here, multiplying this by zero is canceling this world position offset out, right? And you end up with the original scale. Now, if we add, if we make this a scale of one or 0.5, we should get one and a half or like 0.1. Huh. So what I was trying to say is you're going to subtract from this one so that if you want your original scale to be one, you will get one, see? And if you want a scale of zero, zero will get you that. If you want a scale of a half, you'll get that. If you want a scale of five, you'll get that. Although I am not sure why it's flickering like that, so I'm going to have to revisit that later here. But anyway, it looks okay. It's probably bounding. It's probably the bounds. Um, so I'll look at that in a minute here. 
But anyway, so so what you want to do is subtract one from your scale, so that you get so that this scale makes sense, right? This is a scale of one. If I put it to scale, if I put this number to zero, then you get nothing, which is what you would expect to see, or a half, or two. So let's just keep it under <laughs> so that it doesn't look weird. So now we're scaling here. So we could use this sign to scale it up and down, right? And remember this sign is going from one to zero, so that's correct. Now if we want to combine this scale with the rotation, right, we're gonna have to do kind of what we did before. So you take this WPO that scales it out. And you're going to add it to world position, right? So this is going to be the world uh, vertex position for the already scaled object. So we pass that into position. All right, let's just get rid of that. This is going to produce this world position offset, so we're going to add those two together. So this is the WPO output for what a scaled and rotated would look like. Add these two together, and now we've got rotation and scale. And then we could do this too. Rotation, scale, and translate. Right. So you can combine all three together. So what I was trying to say earlier was that when things flicker or disappear, it can be because the object bounds are not changing when you're moving these vertices around. I wonder, I don't know if we can see bounds here. Maybe there's a way to up here somewhere. But regardless, what I mean is, let's say that the bounds are right here and then you translate the thing super far off then and then you look away like you look up at the object and so you're not seeing the bounds anymore then unreal engine could try to call the object even though you're looking directly at it because it thinks it's here so you have to be careful to adjust that if you you know are translating things around you have to make the bounds bigger um, so i honestly i wouldn't translate too much um, rotating is probably fine scaling uh, if you scale you're gonna have to increase the bounds but anyway, the, the main thing I'm trying to teach here is how you use rotative axis, how you use scale, and how you combine them. And the important part to remember for combining them is that what goes in here needs to be actual vertex position in world space. So what we do is we scale it, then we add it back to position to get the actual position in world space. And then we take the world position offset that results in the scale, and we add that to the world position offset that results in rotating that scale. And then that comes out, right? And then, of course, we could translate it. And that's what you get here. So I hope that makes sense and helps somebody. I couldn't find how to combine these um, online, so hopefully this will help somebody. Thanks.